No. I was going to throw him off the roof. It was going to be hilarious. Alrighty, it's patch 1.3.2. There is a big old update and I'm not going to bore you. So we're not going to read through everything. I'm just going to point out all of the really good things. So starting off, we have the scenario sign up system 2.0. So for anybody that's new to the game, essentially whenever your scenario ends, you select a new scenario. If it's not active right away, you basically go into a lock-in period and then the server launches and then you're able to join. Certain scenarios like Prismverse, if there's not enough people, the server won't launch and it'll just push back and allow you to do... Um, uh, essentially it'll postpone it and then you get to go in on the next one when there is enough people that way you don't you get to basically play with no one and have no fun for those that are it's not new uh, they have added a squad system so essentially i believe it's up to 200 people you can add to your squad and move to a server together that way nobody's left behind and in the case of prismverse if you choose a faction as the leader uh, everybody in the squad will go to that faction. The reason why this is so good, especially for Prismverse, is that when you lock in, you have to choose your faction, meaning that it calculates how many people are on a faction and it basically dictates what faction it has less people before this server is even started and it recommends and actually gives incentives uh, in Mitsuko Marks to go to the lower balanced uh, team before the server is even launching so it tries to basically balance it before it goes so you can read more about that uh, on your own moving on we have the gather friends event it is now going to be permanent so essentially if you don't know what this is you can invite a friend that has not played once human to come play and they can borrow one of your weapons and you both get rewards including like star crumbs so uh, take advantage of that. That is now a permanent event rather than a time-limited random one. There is a new cosmetic pack. Uh, well, a couple things in the store. So there's Spree for Less event, a couple theme packs, a bunch of stuff. And they're promoting this as a big sale, probably like for Black Friday. Um, I have a lot to talk about on this subject. So this is going to be a video that will be coming up after this one. Um... There's way too much to unpack about that quote unquote sale. Uh, I'll leave that controversy for the next video. So then we have our standard loot crate here. There is some changes happening though. Um, they are technically every other loot crate. They've done like a $150 max and then a $300 max and then back to a $150. This is a, I believe going to be a $150 back to back because they've stated that this one is going to have, uh, where is it here? It says three rounds yeah three rounds so three rounds would basically mean that it would only be 150 as a maximum but maybe they've even changed something else i will have a video as soon as the loot crates coming out i'll be making that as well as i always do after that we have our optimizations so for construction optimizations what they've done is they've added some more grid alignment stuff and they've apparently updated all their calculation rules so whenever you're trying to fickly snap something onto a roof it should be better now. I haven't got to experience this just yet, so we'll see how that is in game. I'm hoping that they've just fixed it and building is no longer a problem for things like that, but uh, we'll see. For dungeons, uh, what they've done here is uh, Silo, uh, Silo 08 in Wave Winter is now called Silo Taurus, so don't get tripped up by that. Uh, basically what they've done is they've done some balancing on a bunch of these. They've basically done some nerfs on some of the skills, so like Secret Servitor's skills during its light phase. A little bit less damage on them. Um, they're also adding in uh, this part here, which a lot of players don't know about. So in Secret Servitor's dark phase, they're going to put in a, a note, because most people didn't realize if you light up the runes, it reduces the damage reduction on the Secret Servitor. So you want to go and light those up to be able to uh, damage her faster. Uh, a lot of these other things, it's it's just like extra little UI warnings, um, so difficulty and density in Silo Delta. Uh, I have actually done Delta since the patch dropped, and it was considerably, it felt way easier, and personally I didn't like that, but, you know, it, it, I guess it was a little bit overwhelming before, I don't know. Uh, the Winged Warriors mutation has been optimized, it's 10% more damage for bosses. 
uh, but when their HP falls below 33%, they're going to make 9 bulb flies, and the boss will take less damage based on the number of bulb flies. Kill the bulb flies. The bulb flies are actually weaker than they used to be. Um, that's an okay change. Careless Mutation is also actually a big change for builds like mine. Enemies gain 15% HP, take 30% more damage from the first attack. This used to be they take like drastically less damage, I believe, and the first hit was like 45% more damage, so it was good for like one-shot builds. It was horrible for SMG players or assault rifles, etc. So that's a that's a welcome change. Make them a little bit stronger with HP, but you know, only one attack is like it's a little more balanced. So Eternal Land. They have added a great function. You can discull that discard items in bulk from your backpack. Uh, they increase the stack limit of some items. This is not just an internal land. You can actually do this in your regular backpack. So like water is now I think a um, it's like a 1,000 stack. It's a much larger stack. So that changes a lot of builds for your water uh, purifications and stuff. The Prisms can no longer be converted into Astral Sand in your backpack, so this is a Prism Burst thing. So essentially some players were abusing if they got caught with their Prism and they weren't going to get out, they would just turn it into Astral Sand. Uh, this is like before purifying them. So it's just a really toxic thing, so they've made it so you can't do that now. Um, the other things, they added a mail system to Eternal Land, so my mail notification thing, I can finally clear it, which is fantastic and the ability to discard or store items from all your space time backpacks while in eternal land so some welcome small minor changes uh, but they're all nice quality of life then we have the mods so for the mods here big one here is that chaos weavers will now be dropping the keyword suffix uh, self-selection crates and events that dropped normal just keyword suffixes they'll now drop a selection crate Additionally, in mods, a big one that they've done is they've added the ability to search by suffix or attribute. This is huge. You can also search by multiple keywords by separating with the spaces. No longer case sensitive. Um, being able to search better in your mods is a very big welcome change because it's such a pain. Now, this last one here I thought was already in the game, but I guess it wasn't. Uh, essentially, the number of mods you need to unlock mod conversion um, has been updated, and I, again, I thought that was already in the game. So, going through the next stuff, there's less important things in here, but there is the odd good thing, so like Dig to Hell's been updated, um, more HP on the high risk one, and the big one for Prismverse here is that when it's upgraded to Legend, a portal that leads to the final area will appear at the entrance, meaning that if your opposing faction is holding the line, you might be able to just jump through the portal, go down to the bottom and fight them down there and basically get the drop on them. So that's that's pretty cool. Uh, another big one is the speed for the disco ball to rise is much faster in where disco where, where does disco go? Uh, usually if there's enough people there throwing bombs and stuff, you you couldn't actually get that to legend. So that's a good change. This is a big one for enemies, but they don't elaborate on it. So adjusted the weak spot damage multiplier for some enemies. We have no idea what this means. Did they nerf weak spot builds or did they buff weak spot builds on certain enemies? We don't know. Most of the other things in enemies here don't really matter. Uh, we have one that does the shielded elite in Forsaken Giant on pro difficulty. So they adjusted it where the shields for them can now be broken with the flower buds. I don't know why this wasn't the base mechanic originally anyway. We all thought it was going to be and it wasn't. Now, uh, what used to break their shield, which was the Forsaken Giant's ground pound attack, now just kills them, and you have the flower buds to break their shield. So, that is a much needed change. For character controls, the only one that I really cared about was the movement speed and throwing mechanics when using telekinesis. The other parts, it's, I mean, a little bit of optimization, always good. For deviations, uh, the main one that everybody's going to care about here is the optimization of collision. So, they no longer have collision if they're non combat. Um, so I have already been in game to look at that real quick. So the only ones that may still get in your way is your if you have Nutcrackers defending your base, they're actually still class as combat even though they're territory. I couldn't, I was not able to walk through them, but I could walk through everything else like your paper dolls and your Shepasaurs. 
Uh, some people may be interested in this uh, added deviation storage crate to the game. I We have touched it a little bit in game, but I'm not 100% sure the best use for this. Uh, you, It is a personal storage crate style, so basically you put your deviations in there, your allies can't open it. So I'm assuming it's for like if you're farming a lot and you want to like sort your uh, deviations. If it works in Eternal Land, you could store them there and not have to like keep emptying your backpack uh, every time you end a scenario. For Wilderness, uh, the main one for me is this uh, winter or the weather reminders. So essentially you can turn off those weather reminders that always pop up saying the weather has changed, the weather has changed, the chaos weaver is in the area, all that stuff. So like you can just disable that. Another big change for Wilderness is the uh, riddle spots in Wave Winter. A lot of them that didn't give weapon accessories are now going to give weapon accessories that were from Eastern Nalcott, so the other map. So you don't have to go back to the other map to get them now. Reporting system got a couple things changed. Uh, essentially, you've got cooldown changes and uh, you now have to hold the key to report a vehicle rather than just pressing it. Probably my favorite thing in this entire update is under the other, which is your character's current shield is now displayed on screen. This is a fantastic change. There's no reason this shouldn't have been in the game at the very beginning. Shields are a big thing for Bastille players, as well as if you're in Prismverse, there's a injector that gives you a shield. Knowing what your own shield is, is huge. It shouldn't be that everybody else can see your shield except you, because how do you know how to utilize it at that point? So for bug fixes, uh, there's a lot of bug fixes in here. We're very glad that the developers are going through and fixing bugs all the time. Make sure that you report bugs in any game that you play. Anytime you're like, oh, I don't need to report this, somebody else will report it. If everybody thinks that way, you'll never have your bugs fixed or they won't be fixed in a timely manner. So make sure you report bugs when you find them. And But I'm not going to go through this whole list. The main bug that I cared about was in the sound effects, this background music for the Secret Servitor fight. They've finally reduced it. Uh, the volume level on that background music is like 10 times that of anything else in the game. So when you go into that fight, you just blow out your ears, especially if you're wearing headphones. So thank you for fixing that. Uh, and also the other sound effect thing, this is the other thing that annoyed me the most in the game, was the snowmobile sound effect. It just constantly played, so they've removed that sound effect. This is... This is the best part of the bug fixes. All right, so that's it for our quick overview of the 1.3.2 update. Uh, if you wanna see this list here, I'll have it in the description down below. And if you have any comments, concerns, or things that you liked about this update, because there is some pretty good stuff in there. I'm glad that they're still keeping up on this stuff um, and they're communicating with us, which is the biggest part. So for another video like this, there's uh, a link on the left and for all my Once Human content, there is a playlist on the right.